Better shake your booties for black girl nerves. Better shake your booties for black girl nerves. Hi, Lena. Thank you so Hi. much for your time. No, you, you're, I'm admiring the cool record player and the, it's not a Chia Pet. No, it's a, the string of pearls plant. I've become a plant mom over the pandemic. Oh, amazing. I got plants in the house. I got plants in the yard. I'm just losing it. Love it. <laughs> thank you. But thank you for your time. This is such a cute movie. And there are so many things that I liked about it that children will like, that adults will like. And it was just really fun how it came together. I was talking to little uh, Matilda and she's so smart and she's so talented. And she really loved all of the interactions with her coworkers and how they had this great chemistry. When you brought your team together and the crew and the cast, what were some of the priorities you had for this project and just things that absolutely had to happen? Um, I wanted to make sure to keep things grounded as much as possible. Like we had a flying squirrel and all these like <laughs> hijinks that happened. I was like, no, but it has to feel like, like it still has to be grounded and feel like things are real. You know, I don't want I don't want that squirrel to talk, and I want to feel like the relationships are real and the stuff they're struggling with, so that you actually buy that you know the squirrel really is the thing that opens their eyes up to the world again. Um, so that was big for me. That was what was particularly great for me too, because although the squirrel is central to the story, it didn't take over the story and be about the squirrel. It was about these families and reconnecting and reestablishing their relationships. How do how did you guide your team with, you know, where the squirrel is going to be, the placement of the squirrel, how the actors are going to interact with the squirrel? How does that, how do you even map something like that out? Because for us lay people, our eyes just, it's beyond us. And it was very cool how it was executed and it became central to the rest of the story. Yeah, I mean, it was weird because the squirrel didn't exist for a lot of the time. So um, I had a puppet. <laughs> and so <laughs> I would, um, I show them sometimes some squirrel videos, just get an idea what the squirrel was like. And then I would um, puppet the squirrel through the various things that were happening in the scene and Matilda would just remember it. And then sometimes while things were happening, I would voice the squirrel. <laughs> and so like the squirrel would be talking to her and she really runs off of visualization. So I'd, I'd be describing to her like how the squirrel really looks while he's dying and is his like ear twitching and he's looking at her with these big puppy eyes, but you know, his, his energy is leaving him. And that is what really speaks to her. Ben was with that also with those comedic elements Ben was so great and it was so fun to see him do all these kind of slapstick physical type of comedic type of things did he come up with that on his own or was it like Ben look we want you to go out there and just give you all the energy into these comedic segments because he was really cool and he was really funny in a lot of those scenes Oh yeah, we'd get a couple that were on script because you know that's what we do. And then it'd be like, Ben, you know your character, just do your Ben thing. <laughs> and he'd go to it and he figured out a way to get um, Matilda and Benjamin Ainsworth who plays William into the improv fun too. Like I think Benjamin Ainsworth learned improv from Ben by the end, like some of the scenes they have together, both Bens were improving together, which was really cool. Yeah, it was phenomenal. The, the kids were really terrific. Obviously, it's centered around Matilda's character, but little Ben as well. You have a child who plays this important part of, of, of uh, Matilda's character's self-discovery and friendship and beauty in the world, all the while he's playing a blind character. And he navigated that so well. What type of instruction did you give him when uh, they were doing a lot of these scenes together? Um, ben comes from things from a real place, so I had to just kind of help him connect to something that he can use by analogy to help deal, figure out like what William was dealing with at that time. And then mm -hmm. when he was able to like see things from an honest place, then he was able to feel it. And from there he could just like, he'd improv a little, we do improv exercises so that he could feel like he understands the character. And then he just sort of felt his way through it because they're both very, um, in, well, in Kate's books, they say they're very capacious of heart. It's one of the phrases I love most, but they're very good about that. Now on the other side of this and completing it as a director, what would you say working on this project in particular helped you in your di future directorial endeavors? What did you learn from this experience, if anything? Um, I, I mean, it was huge. I mean, this is my second movie. So I learned everything under the sun. <laughs> and I was like, um, I think 
I, I learned a few, I, I learned obviously, you know, kind of all the fundamentals. I, I got, you know, even more experience working with, with great actors and kind of seeing how things work differently with different people. But I also learned just, you know, coming to my own, like what things I need to trust my gut on and which, because when you're a younger filmmaker and you see all these people who've made a lot of like other movies and they're like, you know, pushing back on you and suggestion and now looking back and seeing like where I was wrong and where I was right. It's interesting where it's like, you need to be humble enough to take the information and evaluate it, but there's some things that you just need to trust your gut. And I think I, I was able to kind of gain that capacity after this movie. Definitely. It's so, it's so, I'm so proud as a woman to see all these film directors that are now being, that are now women who are leading these projects and getting them over the finish line. When you look at your early beginnings and deciding that you wanted to get into this industry, is this, how you envisioned the path would take you as, as a filmmaker? Or what did the, the path to filmmaking look like for you when you were first starting out? I mean, I'm not an arrogant person, I think. So I don't think I ever thought I'd be doing like a big Disney movie. <laughs> that's not, that's just like, you know, it's one of those things that's beyond your dreams. You know, you don't even think like, oh my God, your second movie, this giant studio is gonna let you do like this huge movie. Um, but like I was doing, you know, I came out of film school, I was doing short films. And then I had my first independent film, which was literally just the film before this one where I had to do almost everything for like, I was one of the writers, I was a producer, I was the director and you had to like be scrappy and fight for it for years. Um, and so, and so it was all kind of just like along the path to getting here. So um, it feels really nice to see kind of how things have developed and, and to be, and to see like female minority filmmakers, like getting opportunities and like being trusted with, with things and then let, and actually supporting our vision, which Disney was really good about. Is it difficult to, to take your hands off the reins? Like you said, in your previous project, you did all of these different roles and now you have this big, huge team to kind of wield and, and complete the project. Is it difficult to, to do it that way or make that transition from independent to like big, big budget, big studio filmmaking? It was different at the beginning. I think I got, <laughs> I got the vibe down after a while because at the beginning, you know, it's weird to have so many people that you know things are, are going through, but it also challenges you because you have to hold fast to the vision that you want. And there's like a certain type of feel and a comedy and messaging, it was really important to me. And then maybe there's you know things that are coming from test screenings and stuff like that. And so it was a challenge where there was a lot of debates with Disney and they're very supportive, but they also you know have a, a quality control. And so yeah. it was like really challenging yourself. You're like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make sure I have my vision but also something you know that they will that will work for them too, and I think it ended up being the better for that. Absolutely. So when you get to the end, your your last day of filming, you're about to wrap and put it in the can. How did you guys celebrate the the completion of the project? Oh goodness, we were all just so tired by that. <laughs> we had been filming for two months, <laughs> so so by the end we just like sat around and I think we ate like all the desserts that were on set or something. <laughs> and we kind of just hang around and nobody wanted to leave the set. We just were like kind of telling stories and, and you know, hanging out. Mm -hmm. and, and lastly, so we're on the eve of the, of the release. What do you hope the, the kids take away from this? We, the adults will have their own perception and their <laughs> own biases, but what do you hope the kids enjoy most about the film? Oh man, I hope they see themselves in the movie. And I think, I hope they see that like, Ulysses doesn't technically fix everything for them. It, he gives them the tools to fix it themselves. And I think that's something that kids rely, hopefully can realize they can do too. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Lena. It was a pleasure to speak with you. I'm so happy to see film, women filmmakers really getting out there and getting it because that <laughs> just was unheard of before. And, yeah. and now it's awesome and it's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.